Okay, I recently saw Crazy Bad Cuba video, um, his documentary, Cuban documentary video, but basically, mostly he talked about knockoffs, um, but didn't really go in detail about knockoff that much. He mostly just talked about, like, difference between the X cube 4x4 and then brand new V cube 4x4. And I have to say, most of that, what he talked about in there is mm, true, but he forgot to leave out some very key detail about knockoff. And, like, let's say, right here, I have this official Method brand gear cube. Made by Oscar Van Davender. And. Well. Like. Just let's say. Well. Since Oscar Van Davender. Is a puzzle designer. Who makes. Pretty interesting puzzles. But. And. Like quite a few of them. Have been mass produced. By. Like several different companies. Like. Methods. Um, and some other companies, but most of his puzzles have been, like, really good and awesome, but the thing is that, since this is an official Methods brand gear cube, buy from Methods.com, and Method, Calvin Puzzle, and MFA are three puzzle companies which make um, unique puzzles, which they also make puzzles based off of like 3D printed puzzles that are like from a designer's per purpose perspective. Like, um, Method has produced Gear Cube, Gear Shift, both by Oscar Van Davender and the Mosaic Cube by Oscar Van Davender, and M. And Tom Z helicopter, Kirby Copter, and MFA has produced, um, like Tom Z three by four by five, um, and with and Calvin puzzles produced um, couple puzzles by um, Tom Z like the Constraint Q and stuff like that, and since those companies or really good companies make really good puzzles. And they, um, once they produce a puzzle, and they give credit to the original designer, like, for example, this gear cube, designed by Oscar Van and, um, they gave credit to him, um, for designing this puzzle. Now, what they do is, they give, like, a certain per percentage of puzzle, um, sales back to the inventor. Like, let's say, like, this is, on methods.com, this puzzle costs, like, um, the, like, I think $15 or something like that. Can I remember? 30 or $15 or something like that. But, like... And like 10% of that sale goes back to the inventor, designer, which is Oscar Van Damender. So, with that, in like, let's say, the like $15 and 10% of the sale goes to Oscar Van Damender. And first year um, of them being out, um, effort sold like over... 300,000 gear cube. And then, like, let's say, during, like, and then, during the next, second year of it being out, another company, like, Land Land, decides to make a gear cube, which is exactly the same thing as this, but can be bought for, like, 10, for, like, $5, and 
you'd be thinking like, oh wow, this GeoCube, the Landland GeoCube is cheaper, so I'm going to buy it. But that, that's like taking away sales from Method, which also is taking money away from the inventor, Oscar Van Davender. So, yeah. He, there's some um, money issues with that, too. And speaking of GeoCube, the GeoCube uses a VCube mechanism like what I'm showing you here. Now, this edge um, right here, center, and then this corner. Then, as you're looking over here, you can sort of see a similarity between um, the pieces, how they're very similar, especially the center piece. And like when they be put together, you will definitely tell there's like a huge similarity. Yeah. So, basically, I would have to say this is semi knockoff of V cubes because it has a V cube knock, it has V cube mechanism. Yeah. But the V cube 3x3, the current one that you buy on V cubes website, like this one, does not have a center piece looking like this or edges looking somewhat like this in corners like normal. But Here's an edge. Corner. Like, the corners are typically normal. Most part of it. But, as taking a look at the pattern design, and comparing it to the actual real VQ, um, they definitely took a detour route, which, um, it's more of a Diane um, design. And if you all remember back in like late 2010, like the winter of 2010, uh, VQ was um, suing, had a patent war against Diane. And that was before the VQ 3x3 or the VQ 2x2 and the VQ 4x4. So, the only VQ brand products was out with a 5x5, 6x6, and 7x7. And now, yeah. At the time, VQ did not have any real actual product to defend themselves. But, there's this guy on YouTube named Matthew Ray, who actually designed a VQ um, 3x3 an Autodesk Inventor CAD program and got it 3D printed and here's some of the pictures of it and I can see actually what he was trying to do he actually was trying to recreate um, the VQ 3x3 and actually make a working prototype of it to actually demonstrate to us that the VQ 3x3 could have been made the way in the pattern design was. But his version of it did not work out very well. Like, it did not um, turn out very good or turn smoothly and stuff like that. So, his was sort of like a flop failure puzzle. And, yeah. But, there's been other puzzle that came out, or well, that have been designed. Um, but, they're out, but not really out, out for most of the public to actually buy one and have it, um, in the possession within like, three weeks or so. First one would be this, um, uh, Fengshin Ren Fun Puzzle 
which for the most part really has a lot of similarities between the Diane Pansy um, and the V Cube um, 3x3 design in it because of the center and the corners and sort of how it all fits together. And then there's this other puzzle which is not really a factory puzzle. It's um, called the CX 3. Point, it's the CX 3-1 and there's and it's made by Cubic which is he's a YouTube cuber YouTuber who does cubing videos and stuff like that. The story behind it was like back in summer of 2012 he was trying to design a perfect cube and basically he took features of Diane V cube and some other features that actually put them all together and so basically the cube that you see is the, the CX3 which is really not really that super interesting but it turns really good and it looks amazing and he's working on trying to make it um, available as factory made available so that we all can um, get one for a very good price other than dealing with Shapeways which messed up on a second prototype of it and there's some other issues too but off of that Diane the Diane Guhong was actually the very first cube to actually have corners looking like this and edges sort of similar to this where in previous um, puzzles um, there were the pieces looked somewhat similar to like a standard cube except for like some modifications like some parts of it cut down like that and some other differences but they were mostly very similar to each other. And yeah. So. Yeah. But. And along that. When Guhong came out. It was like revolutionary. Um, mechanism made cubes a lot better. And now I see a trend. With a lot of other cube companies like. Shang in. Well, not Shang in, but Shang Xiao, um, Dian Xing, Gosian, and some other company are creating cubes very similar to Dian cubes with those long corner socks and all that other stuff. But they um, are really interesting and they're turning good and stuff like that. And also, when the Dian Megamix came out, it was like the very first um, Mega Minx to actually have like the corner stock to be a lot like the Diane Me the Diane Guhong in edges sort of similar to the Guhong where the corners have this long stem and stuff like that. But it made the cube it like revolutionized um, the way we actually think of the puzzles as in like how it changed and how we would think about making a puzzle as in like using resources as in like changing up the design so much that it actually turned out better than previous um puzzles and yeah so as in what um crazy bad cuba said in his video that v cube sort of knocked off easing and i would have to say 
Yes and no. Because one, each thing was the very first cube um, company to make a 4x4 with the hidden inner layers. And the way um, Ethan made it, the 4x4 was really good in a way that it was super stable and did not have this much clicking mechanism. And they actually researched and did so much into making sure that it doesn't have the clicking mechanism or the inner layer doesn't misalign that much and had their own unique mechanism which I would see VQ actually sort of knocking them off but what VQ did was some something stupid as in making this clicking in which they could have sort of worked a way around of making and not clicking and not have the middle layers misaligned that much. But what I think what B Cubes did was they knew about the um the um E Sing four by four at the time, but they were sort of researching ways of actually getting like six by six and seven by seven out on the market. So that we could have one, actually a physically one to solve instead of like simulations and stuff like that. So, I think their design was possibly somewhat controversy into the easing. Like they actually took the easing mechanism, modded, made it their own. But I would say yes, but I don't think that they actually truly stole the easing pattern design yeah but their design really helped the cubing community as in making the Shang Shao um, puzzles possible like the um, 6x6, 7x7 through 9x9 and stuff like that possible but if you think about it um, they, their mechanism is pretty unique. Now, about that, yeah, but there's like, um, but like if you use a, um, like a mechanism that's similar to another cube company, sometimes that could be calling copyright infringement. But, like, let's say that you are using the mechanism, but not using the full entire exact same mechanism, like, just bits and parts of it, like, what, um, Cubic did with his, um, 3x3, was use bits and parts of V-Cube and Diane and sort of mix them together and make his own cube, and, yeah, so... It's sort of like that, but if you take a um, cube and copy it 100%, um, including exactly the same shape um, and piece design, I would say that definitely a knockoff, but like if you make the puzzle have a similar mechanism to another puzzle, but not exactly the same, like for example, like how the F2 um, has sort of a similar mechanism to the Rubik's brand 3x3s, but not exactly the same mechanism, like how on the Rubik's brand, Rubik's brand corner looks like this. F2 corners look like that. F2 edges. And then Rubik's brand edges. You can see similarity, but they're not exactly 100% the same. And that 
I would not consider knockoff. But, like, if you copy the puzzle exactly 100%, except for some slight changes, but if it's, like, about 95% exactly the same as another puzzle, then it's a knockoff. But, for the most part, it's the not knockoff, but try to remember that if you buy if you try to find a puzzle on eBay or Light Take, Wall Buy, or some of those other Chinese puzzle, like Chinese puzzle stores, and you see a certain puzzle for a really cheap price, think about it. Most of the time, it's not the legitimate um, brand. Like, for example, if you find a gear cube that like five dollars most likely is a knockoff or if you find like a gear ship or something else like that where it's definitely like a method puzzle or a MFA or um, Calvin brand puzzle that's like below a certain skeptical price, then it will be like, most likely a knockoff, and yeah, but sometimes these places try to trick you into thinking that it's the legitimate true product at like a very cheap price, which will trick you into saying that, thinking that you might actually buy the true thing. Except, if you try to do your research on that product before you buy it, like try to look at um, page information on the website and try to do some little extra research of trying to figure out if it's the legitimate brand, then um, it would be really hard to figure out if you don't know anything like that. So overall, just overall, try to keep in mind that certain companies will um, give certain um, percentage of money sales back to the inventory. Like, let's say you're trying to get a puzzle manufactured like Let's say you created a 3x3x5 um, um, hexagon pyramid and you got it manufactured by Calvin Puzzle and then like five months later some other company like Dancing, Land Land, uh, Moji, Yuxin, QJ, YJ starts making the puzzle for like a cheaper price. And, but your puzzle is like the true puzzle that got manufactured by Calvin Puzzle is like um, $15, but the other company that make it sell it for like five dollars um then that would um direct the buyer's um perspective towards the cheaper product and that makes you lose sale on your own puzzle that you got manufactured and that would mean like you're not getting that much um money off of it and, you, and the knockoff companies are hurting the inventors and the company that manufactures it. Yeah.